Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! It's time <clears throat> again to watch another Lindy Hop competition. Hey guys, my name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. I'm a little under the weather, so you have to forgive my voice. Got a bit of a head headache and a little bit of those flu symptoms. Let's hope it does not uh, get in the way of my judgment on this competition. Super excited. This is one of my favorite things to watch in the genre of swing dancing, which is improvisational swing dancing. This, I believe they call it M&M. &M. Uh, it just basically means a Jack and Jill, which is improvisation with the leader and improvisation with a follower. So <clears throat> we're gonna get into this one. I haven't seen it yet, so let's see what happens. And here we go. All right, we are live. And so far, I don't see any familiar faces. Yes. All right, couple number four. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Someone liked it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. Hup, hoo! <clears throat> They're like, oh snap! <laughs> Yes! A trumpet player! I tell you what, <clears throat> the open uh, Jack and Jill type structure always changes from year to year. The level of the dancers continue to rise. So the, the definition of open is constantly a nimble idea because these dancers just a few years ago would have been like advanced, like just you know, six years ago, these would be the international teachers. It's amazing that the level of Lindy Hop continues to grow um, because of so many factors. The internet, technology, people are into it. And I love it. I love it. Now, you guys know when I judge competitions like this, I am quite open and frank and blunt about the subjective nature of Lindy Hop as a dance. I'd say 75% of it is subjective. And a lot of us judges, we don't really say that. You know, we kind of keep the, the thing that we're looking for to ourselves and private so that people who are out there dancing, they, they don't really know what the standard should be. And so, in my opinion, the standard should not be things that have us judging someone's way of doing the objective thing. That's their style. Hey, I might not like your style, but I think there's something more intrinsic and more basic that I have to be judging in order to be fair on the surface. So the way I look at it is, number one, everybody has to have control. A lot of people use the word technique. I like control because you can control a technique a different way, multiple ways, right? <clears throat> and control simply is, can I see the lead do their role clearly? And can I see the follower do their role clearly? I don't want to see them both fighting um, over what they should be doing. And, and really, they're just two sides to the same body. They're sharing energy at different points. And if I can't see that with clarity, then usually they get a check mark off, like in terms of like what we would call technique. It means they need to work on their technique. People will say that. But that's what they mean. That's what they mean. And so in this comp, everybody had good control which was really surprising because the open usually doesn't have that. Usually there's like one or two people who are extremely strong on the control part and everybody else just still needs to work on their technique a lot. But <clears throat> I can't say that for this one. Everybody was solid on that. So I immediately had to go into my default subjective category. And that is timing and creativity. Those are the last two things I look at. So in my opinion, the majority of the dancers, I would say maybe five out of the six, five out of the seven were nice and safe. And that's good to be safe in the open level. 
because you want people to be able to see that you can actually control the technique, right? But even with that, in a competition like this, I am looking to see not just if you can be safe. I mean, give me a break. Everybody is this good in the open. So that means there, there has to be something more to differentiate yourself from others. And I want to see that more in these competitions. And so I immediately go to those couples who are willing to take risks, who are willing to not be timid with their personality, and who are willing to not be safe. I don't mean safe in a dangerous way where you're obviously jeopardizing your partner's uh, safety, but I mean safe creatively where you might be criticized or your moves may not work in an improvisational setting. So I'm a little bit more lenient when people try different things and they don't work out perfectly, right? So third place for me automatically goes to the one who had control but they were trying different things. And the thing that I noticed that I liked about them was the fact that when things got dangerous and there was clearly uh, somewhat of a miscommunication, they were doing some Charleston and the follower just didn't continue to turn. Some people would say, oh, that's a mistake. Well, if you don't know like how the dance works, you wouldn't know it's a mistake because the leader clearly continued to turn and ended up moving in a completely different shape trying to cover from miscommunication and miscommunication happens that's life and that's beautiful in this dance and so for me I was so impressed on not just their control because everybody else had it but how they were able to recoup when they got out of control that's cool and that couple for me looks like he is uh, number 31 I'm sure yeah she's 82 and he was I believe 31 but he had white on, black black pants. She had kind of a white shirt, black pants. They were excellent. I liked their technique. Yeah, he's got glasses too. I liked their control. That wasn't the thing that impressed me. I don't really care too much now because everybody has control. Everybody looks the same if everybody just does control. It drives me crazy. So I liked the fact that something went wrong out of their control and they recouped in a creative way. Boom. You're in top three in my book. So that's my third place. Number two for me was a little bit more challenging because I wasn't looking at them initially on their first round. I just said, oh, okay, the planet's safe. They're just doing the control thing. A few syncopations with their feet here and there piqued my attention. And I said, well, let me, let me check to watch them a little more on their second set. Now their second set is what got me to say, okay, great. Okay, yeah, this couple, <clears throat> they are uh, second for me. They're second for me. And that was uh, the gentleman, he had, the the lady had yellow on, like yellow pants. I think that was it, yeah. Yellow pants, she had yellow pants, purple shirt, purple shoes, and he had a black suit on. He was doing some stuff that did not impact the follower in a negative way. And I liked that. But they were also working as one, you know, as one body. And they weren't really doing anything that looked disruptive to that. So what I really liked was their second set. They decided to take more risk and they threw in that third ingredient, which was the thing I was looking for, is they put in some creativity to do some moves that other people weren't doing or to do something completely original that no one's ever seen. Now, I can't say I haven't seen what they've done before. I would be disingenuous if I even suggested that to be the case. But I will say how they did it was, an uh, was a surprise for me. I did not expect it to happen at that moment in time, and that's what made it even better. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something completely original. It can be something that's been done, but just done in an unexpected manner to jolt our attention to go, wow, what was that? That's good. That's that element of contrast that I like to look for. So they were in second for me. And then, uh, let's see, my first place. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, my first place went to, she had, uh, yeah, she had pink a pink dress on. I don't know if you call it a dress, a skirt maybe. Yeah, it's just pink skirt. He had a blue suit a blue suit jacket, um, or I think it was like a pink and pink and uh, maroon shirt with tie and red shoes with black 
For me, they crushed it. They had everything the couple that I mentioned that got second place had, but even more. They took more risk with the syncopations. They didn't just wait for the last set to do it. They did it in both sets, which made me go, okay, they're consistent. It isn't just a, like, it's a gimmick where it's like, well, we're just going to hold back a little bit and then we're just going to go crazy Well, the second one. It wasn't like they were trying to win anybody, right? Because you can be really, like, diplomatic and try to f dance for what you think the judges want and... <laughs> And some people do that, but they didn't do that. They, they were themselves the whole time doing syncopations, which is a rhythm inside of a rhythm that doesn't interrupt your partner. That's the way I like to look at it. People can say, well, rock steps and triple steps are syncopations. Yeah, they are, but I call them rock steps and triple steps. And when I talk about that concept of syncopation, I simply mean anything that you're doing that doesn't impact your partner. That's picking your nose. That's kicking in place. That's doing whatever, but... It doesn't mess up the thing that you both are trying to share, which is the energy. And they crushed it. They were my favorites. They were awesome. Syncopations were on point. The control was there and they had the timing. Like everybody else, um, they, I, they get my attention the most. So whoever they are, congratulations on that. I think you guys are great. Who do you think won this open Jack and Jill competition? I'm just so impressed because open does not mean open anymore. It's totally a different ball game. You literally have to watch every competition to see if the word is actually legitimate for the level. And I would not say it so. In this one, this was more like an advanced competition. So anyway, guys, that's what I thought on this one. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section, who you think should have won. Who did you like? If you don't even swing dance, you see things from a different perspective. You don't even see the moves from the same uh, lens that someone who has more experience has, right? So let me know what you think. If this is your first time seeing a Lindy Hop video and you're just like, what is this all about? Let me know because I was in the same boat. I didn't know how the shapes worked. I didn't even realize it was improvisation. I just thought it was all choreographed and it isn't the case. So it's quite impressive to see what you guys think too in addition to you other dancers who love this genre. So let me know in the comment sections what you think, guys. If you guys want some more creative stuff that you've seen like this to help you in your Jack and Jill's, check out some of my classes below. They will really help you out. They're free, and I look forward to assisting you. With that being said, I will see you in the next reaction video. Take care.